I don't know how accurate that is. It's, it's, it's uh, second-hand information, but that's what we've, we've heard on the street. Well, we, we appreciate that. No one's released any count or any figure at all confirmed uh, as to any fatalities or the number of injured in, in this tragedy at all, Joe. Okay. When I was down there, uh, there were there were uh, windows blown out of buildings, even for blocks away, and uh, just just uh, people standing around, a lot of confusion, not really knowing what to do. Uh, I walked to Command Central where the police are at and asked if there was anything I could do to help, and and uh, they were just. Uh, that no one knew anything to tell me to even do. They just uh, suggested that, that we clear the area, and that's about the time that we heard that the second uh, explosive device was found, and, and they really began moving people out, people out of there very quickly. You work in that area, do you, Joey? Just about a block south of there, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, and uh, I want to I know how you feel right now. Well, uh, you know, I, I think people are amazingly calm. There are a few people that are panicked, and, and uh, uh, I'm fine. I was on the street in my car when the blast hit, getting ready to pull in the parking garage, and there was glass falling everywhere, and it was a, a percussion that kind of blew the, the windows outward on the car. They didn't break, but uh, my ears are still ringing from that, and, and uh, it was just a very, very loud blast, and I just hope that uh, uh, all the people are okay. I mean, obviously, some of them are not going to be, but... Uh, it's just a lot of confusion down here right now. now. Understandably so, Joey. We appreciate your time. I believe we're going to be staying here. The FBI is sweeping this building. Okay. And uh, everyone's gone. All right. We apologize. Uh, we're we're unsure. Have... We'll just keep going around here until well, what happens. Uh, tell us what... We, Carol was telling us an unconfirmed report there, as well as some eyewitnesses, uh, uh, perhaps of at least uh, six fatalities, children who might have died in that daycare center. Have we been able to confirm that at all now? I haven't, uh, I haven't uh, we haven't heard any numbers as far as children. I, I do know right after the explosion happened, they were carrying several children out of the building, um, giving, giving them to parents, putting them in their arms. Now, the ones I saw uh, seemed to be breathing. They were covered in blood, uh, and, I, and I mean small children, looked like uh, under the age of six. Uh, and I was told that there, that there is also an, an infant nursery in that building. And um, so several small children were on the second floor. It's where the uh, uh, daycare center is housed. Uh, like we've been told by uh, several people who were in the building at the time, the explosion just uh, literally shook the building and then it just began collapsing. One man described free falling uh, from the fourth floor until he landed uh, on the first floor and uh, there was debris around him. He was, uh, a worker at St. Anthony Hospital uh, on the way into the triage area who obviously uh, did not want to be identified. I said, can you tell me if there were fatalities? He well, evidently, we have uh, lost Mike McCarthy. We've lost Mike, but Matt, it, it should be known that uh, I believe Carol was talking to uh, uh, a lawyer who was in the federal building and claimed to have seen body bags filled with bodies. Well, uh, how many, we don't know. Jerry, the, the scene down here, uh, it, it would be beyond belief that there weren't fatalities with, with, uh, with the damage that we've seen. 
uh, just in uh, our trying to skirt the area and trying to link up with the van, we had to stay on the outskirts, the engineer and I, and, and even on the outskirts, uh, everywhere, the storefronts blown out. Uh, the the uh, the aluminum fronts on store buildings are, are blown, ripped right off. Glass is everywhere. Of course, Carrie, you were down there uh, at the time the explosion occurred. Well, it's safe to say that not everyone got out of that building before the explosion happened. I mean, it it literally just collapsed. And um, if you've ever seen um, a footage of when they blow up buildings for destruction purposes and construction purposes, I mean, it looked just exactly like that. I mean, it just collapsed. So, I mean, and, and like the man who said that he just started falling, uh, with the floors falling in like that, there has to be people uh, still trapped in the debris. And, you know, we're getting reports that there might have be even been as many as four bombs reported to have been found. Uh, we know of the one that, uh, of course, went off in the building. Uh, we were told by another FBI agent that they think that there might have been a, another bomb either in the federal building or in the federal courthouse which is just south of the uh, Alfred Murray building. So, and then we're getting reports, uh, hearsay, that they, they've been told that they found another bomb. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's real difficult at this point to get official information, but that's what we are being told. They have continued, Jerry, moving people back, one of the problems we have. There is no way to get within four blocks coming any direction uh, to the Alfred T. Murray building. I mean, even law enforcement officials with whom we've worked, whom I know and who recognize me, absolutely refuse to allow me in. Uh, they say that there is uh, an imminent danger that uh, continues to exist and no one will be allowed in this to the area until uh, it is safe. And uh, that's kind of where we are at uh, this point in time. The, uh, even the emergency workers have pulled back uh, four or five blocks uh, in either direction. Utter destruction. Uh, the north part of the building is completely gone. The east wall continues to stand. Uh, but literally half of the Alfred P. Murrah uh, Federal Building has uh, uh, disappeared. Okay, Mike, we appreciate that, and we'll get back in touch with, uh, with him uh, here following our reports. Uh, let's go back to Matt Skinner, uh, uh, closer to uh, that scene. Matt? Well, actually, I'm no closer than Mike is. Uh, uh, everyone, and, and as uh, Deco, Mike Ford, everyone, including law enforcement personnel, are being moved out of the area. We are at Northwest uh, 10th and Walker, and to give you an idea of the power of this blast, everywhere I look, there are broken windows, there are storefronts, that, and this is four or five, four or blocks, five blocks away, Matt. Away from the uh, from the uh, scene, Carrie. Uh, what I have to ask you again. As, as Immediately, at, as the explosion went off, all of the. Um, stained glass windows in the St. Joseph's Catholic Church on the east side of that church just started blowing out. So, you know, in the beginning I thought it must have been some type of gas explosion. I thought the church was going to erupt into flames. Then I looked behind me, I could see the, the smoke billowing out of the, the federal building. Now the south side of the building um, looks as if it just had minor damage. I mean, when I say minor, compared to the other side, I mean all of the, the windows, of course, are blown out on the south side. But then when you walk around to the north side of that building, it's just, uh, I mean, your heart literally sinks into your stomach. I mean, it, it's gone. Standing by, we understand, Delvin, they're going to sweep the Capitol for bombs. Is that correct? That is correct, Jerry. I have just been told by uh, officials with the State House that uh, they are starting to evacuate the building. They want everyone out of the building in about 30 to 45 minutes. At that time, they're going to bring uh, several dogs, uh, up uh, through the building and sweep the state capitol building. Uh, this is just a precaution. Uh, as far as we know, there have been no threats to the capitol building, uh, but uh, what they're wanting to do is just uh, take a precaution, uh, go, bring the dogs through, go through the building, and uh, see if perhaps something might be here uh, in light of this tragedy downtown. Any of the injured. Tell me about the patients coming into the hospital right now. How full is it getting? Uh, we're, we're still in pretty good shape. So far we've treated 60 adults at University Hospital with various injuries. We have canceled all of our clinic appointments, of course, and mobilized the entire medical staff. Uh, so we're in real good shape there. We're also in real good shape at the, the Children's Hospital. So far we've uh, received uh, 10 children and uh, 5 adults at uh, the Children's Hospital. The injuries raising, ranging from uh, minor abrasions all the way up to critical burns, uh, age range on the kids from uh, two months up through 18 years. It's 200 West 5th? 
I, I'm sorry, could you repeat the entire... Uh, I mean, that is the correct location or the exact location of this, right? Yes, yes, that's correct. Well, well Matt, just uh, going through some of the federal offices uh, that were housed in this particular building, of course you had, uh, uh, let's see, the Agriculture Department was there, but, but and as I've mentioned, Army uh, recruiting stations, you also had the DEA, the Defense Investigative Service was there of the Defense Department, you had the Drug Enforcement Administration there, I know the Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms offices uh, were there. The uh, the General Accounting Office, Social uh, Security, right? Uh, General. Uh, well, I was going to say General Services Administration, but I don't believe they're there. But you did have some building managers uh, from the uh, the uh, the GSA that were there. Uh, HUD was located there. The Housing and Urban Development Department. Various aspects of uh, of, of that particular federal agency. The Marine Corps Recruiting Station was there. Again, DEA of the Justice Department. Uh, Labor Department, um, yeah, different uh, aspects of the Labor Department were also there, just numerous federal agencies that were located in this building. And Jerry, if, if I might add, the Oklahoma Water Resources Building, which is just across the street from uh, the federal building at uh, Fifth and Harvey, uh, the top of it was almost completely uh, taken off. So, uh, you know, I, I haven't heard any reports about damage, but of course the windows were all blown out, but it ha received a lot of destruction. And it looked... Uh, still see from where I'm studying, ambulances coming in and out. So evidently they are still uh, moving people in and out. Uh, and again, I, I want to repeat from where we are, which is as close as you can possibly get, Northwest uh, 10th and Walker, here with Kerry Holsey. Um, the uh, the damage here is is rather remarkable. From over the downtown area has uh, received a, a damage. Buildings, uh, especially the glass in all of the buildings, were just blown out. And it has uh, been about two and a half hours, a, a bit more, since the blast. And people are still coming to this area, evidently, to, to find out about their loved ones. Uh, Heard a story from a KTOK listener who works with the Native American program in the federal building. He was in the west end of the eighth floor. And that Calvin Mosier is uh, first the mark of somebody who survived this extraordinary blast, still has glass in his hair, and he just saw himself for the first time in a mirror and was surprised to see the blood on his face. He not only has an extraordinary story himself, but I'm sure this is one of many stories we'll hear of people who, through coincidence, luck, fate, or whatever you would want to ascribe it to, were not at their death when this explosion took place. Calvin Mosher, hello. Hello. Uh, we're delighted that you're okay and uh, you look like you're going to be cleaned up. Now, you did not hear the explosion. You saw the flash and felt the concussion. Yes. Uh, I was sitting at the desk, probably uh, uh, maximum of two foot from the outside north wall and uh, working at the computer there. And uh, I saw a flash uh, through the side vision. Uh, right hand side of me, I was facing to the west, and uh, I saw the flash instantly. Then I flew across the room, I assume, because the next thing I knew, I was getting up under some trash and, and debris. And, and uh, a lady that works for me just down probably uh, 15 feet away from me, uh, I, I heard her, and uh, uh, so I, I dealt her, and she said that she was okay and then i asked her if there was anybody else and at that same time uh, joe tikaroski another gentleman that works for me uh yelled that he was there and then i asked about the next lady on down to the east and, and he said that she had just gone to the meeting and uh so um and their areas were severely damaged were they not yes uh-huh and um he happened to be at a, at a file cabinet probably 20 feet away from me and, and uh, but the floor area in which he normally sits uh, at his desk uh, was gone and the lady next to him who's gone to the meeting and her floor tree just gone too uh, so anyway I, I looked out the window and uh, well just no, nothing left there <laughs> looked out the north wall and uh, uh, I could see the uh, car parking lot across the street and all the cars were damaged and burnt and uh, that's where most of the smoke was coming from, was from the car. Uh, at that point in time, papers were blowing everywhere, and, and uh, you know, there just wasn't much activity in the ambulance or anything. And then a few minutes later, was, you could see the fire truck coming. And 
So I, I could see that you know, the damage to the building was severe. How do you feel now? You say you have a terrible headache. Yeah, pretty bad headache. Uh, uh, and I feel all right. And Jerry? Yes, Carol? Uh, we have Calvin's son, Eric, here as well. He was working on a horse ranch in Edmond. They felt the blast there. And Eric, lean up here so we can hear. Um, when did you understand that it was the federal building? When did you hear that? Well, I heard it on the radio and tried to call them. And I, I couldn't get anybody, so I got in my truck. Another guy and I did and went and got, picked up my mom. We drove down to find my dad. And coincidentally, their father and husband was standing in front of the federal building when they got there. Now, Mrs. Mosier, who has emergency medical training, has been put to work. And they're not sure what, oh, there she is. She just showed up at the triage center. Pull her and get her, if you will, Calvin. We'd like to know uh, what she's been doing. Was she called in to help at the daycare center, to your knowledge? I, I don't know. They just, when they started finding uh, the children, why, uh, she said she could help. And Jerry, if you'll hang on, she's coming well, right over. Carol, while you do that, I'm going to try and put... I don't know if I can put you on hold on this phone. <laughs> there she is. Can okay. You take yeah. Phone? We'll just go with you. This is live coverage from KTOK, Oklahoma City, as well as KEBC, KJYO, and the Oklahoma News Network. I'm Jerry Bonin. Live coverage of the disaster of the Alfred Murrah Federal Building in downtown Oklahoma City. Carol Arnold joining us. Uh, yes, Jerry. Um, Jenny Mosier has joined us. She's still wearing her rubber gloves. Jenny, can you tell us what you've been doing for the last couple of hours? I've just been trying to help people out. We carried six babies out of the nursery, and uh, are they dead? They're dead. Six dead babies. And what about the other children? Do you have any reports on them? No, I haven't. Then they cleared us out because they said there was another bomb threat, bomb there. So we've just been waiting. And have you ever experienced anything like this? Never. Eric, are you there? Yes. We appreciate your time this morning. Uh, purportedly, the Nation of Islam uh, phoned an Oklahoma City TV station is taking credit for this bombing uh, and, and such. Tell us, what are you thinking right now, and who is the, uh, the Nation of Islam? Um, if it is the Nation of Islam, you may have more devices in the area. What makes you say that, Eric? Uh, Nation of Islam is a very well-connected group, um, well-financed, and they may have ties to other terrorist groups. Um, if this is the correct uh, person who carried out this attack, um, so watch out in the area. Um, probably take it with a grain of salt whether or not Nation of Islam is responsible. Um, we're going to have to find out what sort of device was used. Many of these groups tend to use the same sort of uh, explosives each time, and that will give us an idea of actually maybe who was behind it. Well, but but striking in the heart of uh, of America, I, I mean, this comes just a week after uh, the arrest of what two individuals in connection with the the bombing of the World Trade Center, as well as uh, an effort. Uh, what I think the one arrest out in the Philippines last week, mm -hmm. uh, that that effort to blow up uh, what U.S. planes over Asia. Yeah, this may be part of a, a larger scale attempt. But I don't wouldn't be willing to say that at this time. Uh, Melanie Wainwright? Yes. Jerry Bonin here. Hi, Jerry. Melanie is with KFOR-TV. Uh, you took the call. You worked the assignment desk there. Right. You took the call for someone or from someone claiming to represent the Nation of Islam. Yes. How soon did this happen? How did it go down? Uh, well, it was about 9.30 or 9.45. And uh, he just called and said, I have some information. And I said, yes. And he said, I'm with the Nation of Islam. And uh, we are responsible for this this bomb. And he said, "I just we wanted to let you American people know this can happen anytime, anywhere. It doesn't have to be in New York or L.A." And he hung up. You sure it was a he? Yes. Uh, a a foreign-sounding voice, broken English, or yes, what? yes. Mm -hmm. well, did you take it seriously at that point? Well, I immediately told uh, you know my managing editor about it. Uh, you can't count out anything in a situation like this. And uh, I turned around immediately and told uh, my managing editor, and they just, you know, couldn't believe it, of course, and we went ahead and reported it on the air almost immediately. Mm -hmm. have, have you been interviewed by federal agents? No.
Uh, and no one... Not yet. No one except us, huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Melanie, what were you thinking at the time, though, when, th when this happened? I mean, that did you really think this perhaps was a, a, a terrorist organization phoning you or a hoax? I, I just didn't know what to think. I, I had no idea what to think. I was a little bit scared. Um, I, you know, I just don't know. <laughs> I, I immediately thought... This, this isn't happening. <laughs> it's one of the worst things I've seen in my many years. I was able to park near the uh, fire department headquarters where they've massed all the fire trucks, and as a group of firefighters went walking down the alleyways, I joined in. No one seemed to stop me, and I got all the way down to the building itself, and it is just a site of utter, utter uh, destruction. The full side of the building is out. They're still pulling people out of the building itself. I saw several people being led away with a dazed look on their face. I saw many people trying to get down there to find out if their loved ones are okay or if they were involved in the building. A lot of Red Cross officials are down there also, and it's just everyone seems to be walking around in a state of shock, much like what you would see in something like Southeast Asia when I was over there after a, a bomb went off. People just do not believe what happened, and they're just walking around in a state of shock. And Jerry, uh, I've been asked to repeat again uh, this request from an Oklahoma City officer do not come down to this area. Do not come down to this area uh, for any reason. You won't be able to get uh, near the area. Uh, there is, there's nothing to see uh, at this point that, that you can't see on television or hear about on the radio. So uh, please do not come down to this area. Matt, do we know whether uh, police and the mayor and uh, authorities are preparing any sort of a, a news conference to release uh, or reveal what they know so far in terms of, of numbers and that sort of thing? KTOK's Trey Davis is out and about right now, and we expect him uh, uh, to hear from him shortly as to, uh, as to what uh, the plans are regarding that. Now, uh, KTOK's Mike McCarville is still around the scene, Mike. Jerry, we're now almost three hours into this uh, developing disaster in downtown Oklahoma City. And uh, we've received the one unconfirmed report that uh, there are at least 11 fatalities. That's from one hospital where victims are being taken. I should also add that at this time, as I say, almost three hours after this event, emergency personnel from the surrounding uh, parts of the state actually continue to pour in. I just saw. Uh, fire trucks from the Weatherford Police Department rushing into the uh, immediate area in downtown Oklahoma City. Back to you, Jerry. Okay, thank you, uh, Mike McCarville. Uh, Matt, there you have even the, the list of the fatalities. Could be growing. Again, it's all unconfirmed, but uh, Mike is indicating perhaps 11. Did you, what did you see? What did you hear? Well, we were just beginning to, uh, we were waiting for the judge to come in for court to convene. Um, I was involved in a trial down at the county courthouse, and um, the jury had just been seated in the box, and we're all sitting there, and the, uh, uh, we heard uh, this sound. Of course, everybody that's listening heard it, too, I suppose, and it was just, I'll never forget it as long as I live. The whole building shook. A 20-foot window in the courtroom broke, and fortunately, there were blinds in front of us so that the glass was caught by the blinds, but it's really quite frightening. Did you have friends in the federal building or in the courthouse nearby? I know quite a few people in the federal building that I'm very concerned about right now. now what, uh, immediately after the blast where you were, what, did people just run out? Or? No, no. Judge Dixon came in and asked everyone to remain calm and be seated until the uh, sheriff had decided that the courthouse should be evacuated. And when did you first hear that it could have been a bomb? I had probably been out on the street about 10 minutes before then. At, up to that time, I was assuming it was a gas explosion or something like that. And I think that was the assumption. Thank you very much. I think that was the assumption. This is what uh, President uh, Clinton is keeping uh, abreast of uh, this situation and uh, we go now to a uh, report from ABC's uh, Vic Ratner. Interrupting a series of foreign policy meetings, President Clinton got a quick briefing on the situation and spokesman Mike McCurry reported Mr. Clinton's concern. The president is obviously very troubled by the news reports coming from Oklahoma City. The president was told that Attorney General Janet Reno has already ordered federal help sent on the way. She had already dispatched an FBI team. We understand that other 
Uh, federal agencies, including FEMA, are also in a position uh, to respond. And federal officials are also mobilizing rescue teams to be sent to the disaster area. Vic Ratner, ABC News, Washington. And uh, that's uh, Vic Ratner. Uh, Matt, uh, forgive me here, I'm going to go to a couple of uh, reports. First to, uh, Ken Johnson, I believe, uh, coming up. Uh, Ken? Yeah, Jerry? Ah, there we go. Yeah, okay, I got finished talking with uh, Thomas Congilion. He is the Vice President of Medical Affairs at St. Anthony Hospital, and he gives us the latest on the uh, medical aspect of this uh, tragedy here in Oklahoma City as to the number of people they're treating and what's going on here at St. Anthony Hospital. Uh, the situation at the present time is that we have treated uh, more than 56 injuries. Uh, there have been several more since last count. Um, at the present time, the medical teams downtown are unable to get into the wreckage to retrieve more of the injured because of the presence of other uh, bombs in the area. I've been told by the police department that just as soon as those bombs are defused, they will permit the medical teams to enter. Then once the medical teams enter, we expect quite a large number of rather badly injured individuals being brought here. The capacity to we have an incredible capacity. I will tell you that of the 56 we treated, each of the 56 injured individuals had a single doctor and at least one or two nurses with them. So we have had an, an amazing outpouring of support from the medical community. To have 56 doctors here at one time treating 56 patients is rather unheard of. We also right now have well, at least three or four other doctors who are just sitting here waiting for more of the injured to come. We have three patients in the operating room at the present time. We have more operating rooms ready to be used if needed. So we, are, we don't have a problem with capacity. We do have one problem with uh, probably a few too many volunteers. Uh, we've had volunteers coming from far out of town, and I cannot tell you how much I've... ...to